Nice place, wow. I've been hearing about this one. Great job. Great job. Thank you very much for being here. It's an honor and very uh, important time in our country. A lot of things are happening, and I think when it all ends up, it's going to end up very good for everybody. It's an honor to be at Gateway Church with the Attorney General, our great Attorney General, William Barr. Thank you. And my friend Ben Carson, who's done a fantastic job at heart, Secretary. And a young star, Jerome Adams, General. Where is Jerome? Jerome. Along with a lot of my friends out in the audience, in fact, a lot of the great political leaders from Texas, I see. Some great, great friends, and I want to thank you all for being here. Faith leaders, members of law enforcement, so important. We want law and order. We have to have a lot of good things, but we have to have law and order. <laughs> Got to have some strength. You have to have strength. You have to do what you have to do. And you look at a Seattle. We just came in. We just see over the screen, and we've been hearing about it. Bill and I were talking about it. The a law and order. Look at what happened in Seattle. They took over a city. A city. A big city. Seattle. It's a chunk of it. A big chunk. Can't happen. That couldn't happen here, I don't think, in the state of Texas, could it? I don't think so. I don't think so. So I want to thank pastors Robert Morris and Steve Dullen. They're great people. Great people with a great reputation, I have to say that. Great reputation. And Gateway Church, the team, uh, has been incredible in hosting us. And I'd now like to ask Pastor Morris and Bishop Jackson to lead us in prayer. Thank you. Thank you. Lord, we need you. We need you at this time in our country. And I thank you for our president. I thank you, Lord, for our leaders. I thank you, thank you, thank you. I know in the Bible that when something was emphasized, it was repeated. Holy, holy, holy. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Lord, that we are about to bring tremendous progress to a problem that's been here for a long time. And I thank you for this administration. And Lord, we pray your blessings and your guidance today on this meeting in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you so much for what you're doing today. You have revealed so many things that are untoward, even evil. But we ask, according to Isaiah 50, verse 4, that you would give us the tongue of the learned, yes. that we should know how to speak to the heart of this nation. Give us a word in season to him that's weary, and waken us morning by morning, God, that we would hear and speak. We have a great, courageous president who's a problem solver. And let him speak as your mouthpiece and act as your instrument. And we thank you for this time. Amen. Um, well, thank you, Mr. President. Um, I just was thinking about that 30 years ago, I was serving as associate pastor at a small church and I asked Bishop Harry Jackson to come and teach us on race relations, <laughs> to teach us what we didn't know, because we don't know what we don't know. And now 30 years later, uh, Bishop Harry and I are sitting on each side of the President of the United States. concerned about healing a problem that we've had in our nation for a long time, but not just addressing one part of the problem, but housing, we have the Secretary of Housing, Education, um, uh, Justice here, uh, Attorney General Barr, thank you for being here. Thank you, uh, a great Governor, Governor Abbott, and I believe that we're going to work together and we're going to see uh, freedom and justice for all in America. Thank you, Mr. Thank President. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Great job you do here, too. Great job. Jack, go ahead, please. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, thank you, Pastor Morris, for offering your church. I think right now, like any other time in our nation's history, we need God. Yeah.
I'm praying to the Holy Spirit to put words on my mouth right now. And I want a nation to hear me. We need the fear of God. <laughs> Mr. President, you're the only Republican I've ever voted for. <laughs> And I don't just say that to make you feel good. Honestly, I, 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 that's not my goal, man. I'm saying that because you stood up for the word of God. And as believers, as the church, we have to pray for our president and have his back. When he raised that Bible up after those folks burnt that church, we are in a spiritual warfare. We cannot fight this battle with flesh and blood. We cannot fight this battle with politics. You cannot politicize oppression. I grew up right down the street. I looked at skinheads in the eye at 13 years old. My black father went to a KKK rally to protect me. I know what racism is. So when I hear words get thrown out about white supremacy, it eats me up. Because these men are white supremacists. That's not what they look like. I'm telling black kids across America right now, we always hear we don't have black leaders. Look at this table. We are not as divided as our politics suggest. We are not as divided as our politics suggest. But I tell you what, this president, when I walk into my prisons, I'm, I'm blessed. I, I teach in prisons across our nation. Men who are broken, the most broken men in our country. Our Bible teaches us to serve the, those in prison. Our Bible teaches us to serve the poor. And when I walk into my class, and I say, guys, raise your hand if you've gotten your sentence reduced from the First Step Act. And every single one of them raised their hand. That's because of you, Mr. President, and that's because of policy. But you're brave enough to go against what everyone else has said about you. Now I'm calling on you to do more. We have a real issue in our country, and the root of it, let's not get our eye off the enemy. The root of it is fatherlessness. Our kids don't have fathers. Attorney A.G. Barr, you said it earlier. You talked about pulling God out. Do we talk about education? Well, 71% of those kids that drop out of high school don't have a father in the house. We talk about criminal justice reform. You're five times more likely to go to prison or have a run-in with the police department if you don't have a father in the house. We talk about health care. You're four times more likely to live in poverty if you don't have a father in the house, which means you're going to be sicker. We don't have to keep looking for the problem when we see it. Now it's time for Americans of all colors. I'm calling on my white brothers and sisters. I'm calling on my, my Spanish brothers and sisters. Get out of your bubbles. Go into the communities that are underserved, and let's do what Jesus told us to do. We can bridge this gap of fatherlessness. All we got to do is go out of our bubbles, Go bridge the gap with these kids. Teach them what you teach your kids. 
We all have rooms in our homes for a couple, couple little bro- boys to come in and play with our, our sons and daughters. Let's bridge the gap through love, through Christ, and through being what we all know we are, and that's one America. God bless America. Thank you very much.